Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and I'd be lying to say that I wasn't ecstatic to bring you guys this video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the AlphaWise W10 DLP 3D printer. Uh, this is a 3D printer that's been available for pre-order for about a month now, and units are just shipping out this week. I was lucky enough to get my hands on an early uh, unit, and I... I uh, have been going crazy with it over the last couple of days here, just printing as much as I possibly can and diving right in. So let's take a look at my experience so far. So I've had my eyes on this 3D printer for quite a while for multiple reasons. One, DLP or resin 3D printing is something that I've been interested in for a very, very long time now. Uh, I've been on the verge of purchasing one of the anti-cubic photons for a long time, but I held off. Uh, and then I saw this printer announced very kind of quietly about a month and a half ago. And uh, the price on the pre-order, which I don't know if it's, this price is going to stick or whether this is just a pre-order price, but it's $300. And so that had me really, really, really enticed. And I was, I was more than likely going to just purchase this outright myself, but I did reach out to GearBest and they uh, were more than happy to send me a review unit out, which I was stoked on. Um, so this unit arrived. I did as much research as I could beforehand on it, but there was not a lot of info available. And I've been around DLP and SLA printers, but I've never actually had hands-on experience myself printing with them. So uh, I wasn't exactly sure what I was getting myself into. I did know about the post-processing and, uh, you know, as much as you could possibly know without doing it yourself. So uh, the printer showed up just literally yesterday, early, early morning. I hopped out of bed ran to the door and I was ready to go. So I unboxed the machine, took a look at everything. It comes with a little aluminum uh, build platform. It comes with a power supply, a spatula, some playing cards, which I'm assuming that's for uh, leveling the build plate, but I ended up using paper instead. Um, so I've got some playing cards if I ever lose any. Uh, it also comes with uh, a couple gloves, it comes with 250 milliliters of resin, it comes with some Allen keys, it comes with some wipes, it comes with an extra FEP film for the vat. It comes with everything you're going to need to get up and running with the exception of some isopropyl alcohol for your post-processing. Uh, but I was very happy it at least came with some resin because I did not have any uh, laying around at least. So uh, once I got it, I unboxed everything, I popped in the... Uh, micro SD card that was included with it and checked out the manual or the setup instructions which were relatively straightforward uh, but I figured I would, I would just kind of show you what I did to get this up and running and um, you will see in this video that I've had nothing but great success with it so far but I want to show you kind of what I did um, as far as the setup to get there so I plugged in the machine, I turned it on, it's got a nice little touch screen which is super easy to navigate and I went under settings, I went under move and all I did was I raised the uh, build plate or the, the lead screw so that way it was up and far away from the uh, vat as possible. So once I felt uh, that I had it raised up high enough, I went ahead and a little uh, counter screwed the little thumb screw. I slid the aluminum build platform into place and I just clamped that down. I then went ahead and grabbed the included Allen key and loosened the four screws on the build plate. This will actually drop the build plate down so that way you can level it. Um, this is a really nice, nice setup. Uh, a lot of DLP printers are kind of going this route, but it makes leveling the build plate really easily because it's adjustable on all four corners. And um, there's not really much calibration at all, which is always a plus. So once you loosen the screws, you got to remove the FEP vat. So I went ahead and... Uh, again, unscrew the two screws on the left and the right to loosen that up, and I just slid it out of the way. After that, I just grabbed some regular printer paper, I believe it's A4 paper, I tore off a piece, set it on top of the uh, LCD screen panel or where the uh, you know LCD shines through, and then I went ahead and hit move, and I homed the printer. 
It's going to give you a little warning just saying, hey, make sure you've got everything clear, which is nice in case you're tired and forget that. But uh, I went ahead and honed it. I had my fingers crossed that everything would go completely fine, and it did. It goes down and presses itself on the paper and then uh, kind of bounces back a bit and then sets itself again. So at this point, you're going to want to just tighten those four screws that you loosened. Uh, it recommends to use like your left hand or one of the hands to um, hold the build plate in place while you use your other hand to tighten it. So I just kind of put just a little bit of pressure on the uh, aluminum build plate uh, to make sure that it wasn't wiggling up or anything like that. And then I use my other hand to just tighten those four screws I tightened them nice and snug, but I definitely didn't pry down on them. Um, I don't think that, typically with most things, I don't try to over clamp them because uh, out of fear of damaging. So as long as you tighten it just snug, you'll be good to go. When removing the paper, you should feel the build plate kind of uh, having some resistance because it is nice and close, but it shouldn't it shouldn't tear the paper. You shouldn't have to put too much force to remove it. So uh, once that was done, I went ahead and raised up the build plate again, just kind of back about where I had it before. I placed the vat that I had previously removed back into its place and used those two same screws that I had removed to clamp it down. I will be following up this video with a more extended review uh, once I've done some more slicing and printing of my own files as well as trying some third-party resins which I do have coming in the mail today. Uh, I couldn't wait. I overnighted some last night. So uh, once this is clamped in, just go ahead and grab your resin. Um, I just use the included resin which says light brown but to me it's more of a fleshy tan color but uh, either way it's nice again that they do include some resin. Uh, because not all machines do include resin and there's nothing more irritating than or much of a tease than having resin or having a machine I mean and not being able to use it so uh, the only thing that's kind of weird was this acrylic panel on the top it uses these four like elastic or three elastic bands that you could see in that previous shot to hold it together I wasn't really crazy about it um, it kind of feels cheap I wish they had used some screws or just some kind of other mechanism to hold them together but I will say that it does work and it doesn't affect print quality at all, so it's not a huge deal. It's just kind of a minor detail, in my opinion. But everything else in the machine looked incredibly clean. It was very rigid. The machine feels built well. I like the LCD screen. And uh, overall, the machine just looks really nice. After the shot was taken, I did end up pouring a little bit more resin into the vat. Uh, it didn't give you an exact on how much to pour in, so I had a fear that the build plate would plunge down and there would be gooey resin all over the place, um, which wasn't the case. So I did end up filling this about probably another 30% of the way there. Uh, one thing I will say is I did not wear gloves in this shot uh, or in this video at all. Um, you absolutely want to wear gloves. I ordered a 100 pack of gloves that are coming in the mail. I just didn't have any, so uh, please practice... Uh, you know, being as safe as possible. So then I just went ahead and put the micro SD card in, navigated under the files, and I started printing out the Death Trooper that was already pre-configured and pre-sliced on the SD card. Um, I was very eager, as you can see me in the background there, running around uh, to see this. And then when I came home, I was hoping that it would be obviously a successful print. And to my you know pleasant surprise, and also just I was super stoked to see how well it turned out. It kind of uh, just added to the level of hype that I already had going. So uh, at this point, I took it off and I kind of tilted the build plate into the vat to pour some of the liquid resin back in because there was some on top of the build platform, as you can see there. Um, you're going to want lots of gloves, lots of paper towels, lots of isopropyl, 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol. And I actually just took a, believe it or not, a glass spaghetti sauce jar that I had and filled it with uh, isopropyl alcohol and dropped this part in there uh, and just kind of shook it around a little bit to uh, kind of 
agitate it and then I let it it's currently pretty sunny here in Southern California so after that I just set it outside and let the sun uh, do its thing and so after this one I went ahead and did the three Y schools which is a much taller print and this just turned out freaking insane um, I could not believe it it's it's seriously just such a great print it turned out so good and I printed this in PLA before and so having this side-by-side -side comparison um, to me seeing what it could do was just unreal um, so yeah, if you can't tell, I'm super excited. I've been incredibly impressed with this machine so far. Um, I just right now, as I'm recording this, I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but I have a print going, which was a file that I sliced myself using AlphaWise software. So we'll see how that turns out. And I've got some translucent red as well as some gray resin coming in the mail today. So uh, I will be updating this video in probably a week or two's time, but I wanted to get this out right away for anyone that's on the fence. Uh, if you do want to order it for that $300 pre-order price, I will place a link in the description down below. So um, I seriously think that if you've been holding off, like this is definitely a steal of a deal and a really solid printer to just kind of get you into the resin 3D printing at not a very high price range. So if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys as always so much for watching. I've got a ton of really cool reviews and projects I'm working on and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Until then, peace guys.